Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone today? Today is Friday, right before the big weekend. Woohoo! Yeah, sorry for the uh, for the late, sudden stream, but uh, my normal time, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, did not work this week. I was having major issues with my computer, and I hope, I truly hope I have those issues figured out now, and everything is coming a, a, across okay. What I need to do is I need to freaking upgrade my computer so I can do all the streaming that I want without having to worry about my CPU usage and all that crap. Because I got like a 350 megabit internet connection. <clears throat> so I don't have problems with shoddy internet. It's my machine just bogs down so bad I can't even get a stream across. So I need to, I need to upgrade my box. So, uh, yeah, so it would be archiving them after two weeks on YouTube would be an option. You know, this has come up a couple times uh, about archiving them on, on YouTube. Uh, the reason I don't do that is really because a YouTube audience is so much different than a live stream audience. Uh, really, the, the average view time of a video on YouTube is like three minutes and 40 something seconds. Uh, so really, it, it's kind of pointless to put them up there. They're really two different audiences. Uh, so I'm still not convinced I should take the time do that. Uh, I'm not against it. Uh, just, just haven't been sold on it just yet, you know. Uh, so today, uh, I thought I would play with this new Xamarin Forms Hot Reload feature. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, share my screen because I am sure everyone has heard of this by now. If you're doing uh, Xamarin Forms development, that is, and. You're probably asking, well, Brian, how did you get access to this? Well, I went to this blog post that you're seeing right here, devblogs.microsoft.com slash Xamarin slash XAML dash hot dash reload. Uh, I went to this blog and Pierce said, hey, why don't you sign up for this preview? And uh, we'll, uh, we'll send you some bits when they're ready. I'm like, heck yeah. So I just clicked that sign up for the preview button and they send me some bits to play with, with instructions and all that great stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, got a new follower. Uh, Alharthia. I think I got that right before it uh, went off screen. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Nika55. But really, you have nothing to lose by putting them on YouTube except for time. Think about three months down the road when Hot Reload is live. People would watch this video on YouTube. Well, actually... You have somewhat of a point. However, they wouldn't watch this video because this video is going to be probably me fumbling around trying to get it to work and just playing with it. Like I haven't really played with it yet. So this is like a, a live run. Let's see what happens kind of thing. Uh, if I do a more, uh, you know, my, my YouTube videos are normally more polished. I put a lot more thought into them, uh, better production quality, things like that. Uh, I don't know. I'm up in the air. I guess it doesn't hurt putting it. Yeah, I can put them in a playlist just called like Twitch archives and just stick them there. And then uh, no one else would really see it unless you wanted to. So, you know, I, maybe I could start doing that. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead and uh, go to this, this blog here written by Pierce and uh, sign up for the preview and you'll get the bits just like I did. They even have a little video showing it running. Uh, but you know... How, how these work, right? They show you the perfect scenario. Like they have an app that they know works. So they're going to record a video and show you all the amazing stuff it does. So let's test that. I want to see, I'm just going to create one from scratch and see if I can get it to work just out of the box. I don't want to have to do anything. Uh, let's see what's supported. XAML. Okay. So XAML supported. Uh, okay. Yeah. We don't want to make change to our XAML. So this is basically saying, Hey, when you make a when your emulator's running and you make a change to your XAML, you shouldn't have to like stop, build, deploy, and debug your app again. That's, that's what we're going for, right? So I'm just kind of skimming through this. Okay. Oh, re resilient to typos. Okay, and unsupported edits. So I'm expecting that if we mess something up, uh, it won't crash on us. That's what I'm kind of getting from that. Okay, let's keep scrolling. Driven by your feedback, what's next? Okay, well, they didn't give me any limitations. I didn't see any limitations in this post. Uh, so let's see if we can find some, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna close this out. And I, let me 
kind of minimize this off to the side because I want to have my emulator up at the same time. And guess what? I am now using visor. I'm not on it. So this is a real device. This Nexus 7 here, this is a device I just pulled out of my drawer I had sitting around. Uh, so that's running over here and I'm using visor. So I'm going to deploy to a real device and it should be much, much faster than my previous streams where my computer just froze on me. Uh, apparently I just have a crappy system. I don't know why it does that to me. So let's start right out of the box. I'm going to challenge this system by uh, doing a Prism app. So let's do a Prism Blank Xamarin Forms app. And uh, yeah, we'll call it Blank App 6, it's fine, and create. You know, what, you know what we need? We need some mood music. Let's, let's create some mood music. All right, so here's my uh, options, my wizard for creating a project for Prism. I'm gonna just pick Android, because obviously I'm, I'm not on an iOS machine and are hooked up, and I don't care about UWP, so let's go ahead and uh, create a project. We'll wait for this to go. Let me uh, check for any comments here. No comments, okay. Creating Blink App 6. I'm really hoping this works. What do you guys think? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you think this is going to work right out of the box? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I'm, I'm hoping so. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just, you know what? File new Prism app and let's see what happens. Okay. We'll uh, we'll have it come up in, the, in my uh, on my device. We'll make, change some XAML, simple XAML changes and, and see what happens. Then I want to throw some like more complicated stuff in there. Much more complicated stuff. Like custom control stuff. Okay, yep, I know about that. All right, so we have our project here. Let me set this as the startup. Okay, now one of the things... Oh, wait. What's this? Let me bring this up. Okay, no errors. Uh, one of the things that I was told to do, according to the instructions, is that I have to update to the latest preview of Xamarin Forms. Okay, so you can't just use uh, the stable version that's out there now. You have to up you have to update to the preview. So let's go ahead and right click, and I'm going to let's see, manage NuGet packages. And we're going to have updates. And let's see what issues we run into. Okay, so let me hide that. Come over here. So we definitely need Xamarin Forms. So we'll go ahead and update that. Bam. Let's see. We're going to have any issues here. Looks good, except, all right, so I followed step one and this, what's going on here? I guess I'm, I'm not at the bottom of my Visual Studio. Oh, we're rolling back, we're rolling back. Why are we rolling back? You see that? I can't even update. Oh, it successfully installed Android reference pack. Xamarin Forms Pre-1. Okay, why did I can't upgrade my project? My Android project? You know what? It's probably because I, you know what? I can almost guarantee you the reason it will not update my, my Android project is I bet I have to update all of these packages too. What do you bet? Did the stream just stop or is it my internet? Uh, well, I'm still going. So hopefully it's your internet. Okay, great. Someone can see, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna update all these and hopefully that doesn't take too long, except. Ooh, look, we have a prism.uni.forms preview. You know, we might as well update that too. Might as well update everything. Update the world. Okay, let's see. Crossing my fingers. I'm hoping this was the problem. Otherwise, I wouldn't know why it wouldn't update my uh, Android project. Okay, that looks okay. Why is this in a... Why is that floating? That's ridiculous. Get back down there. No. 
Down here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. So we'll get rid of that. Now let's try to update that here. That should work now. Zoltra Lore. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? Just sitting here trying to upgrade my nougat packages. Okay. That was it. So if you're updating your Xamarin forums to the latest preview, you have to make sure you update your Android to use the latest Android support files or it will not update your, uh, your Android project. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and update Prism. Why not? We're living on the edge here, aren't we? Bam. That was scary. Did you see that list? Golly. So scary. Let's see what happens, shall we? Oh, Carl, yeah. Select all packages, then update. That's dangerous, too. I'm scared to do that. Because you never know what's a dependency of what and what's not allowed to be updated. That gets people in print with Prism in trouble all the time. All the time. Because they'll update the, the container package when Prism is built against an earlier version and then it breaks. They're like, oh, what's going on? I can't fix it. Well, that would be the problem. Okay. So it looks like we were able to upgrade everything per instructions. Upgrade Xamarin Forms to the latest uh, preview. And let me set this back to the startup project. Yeah. Living on the edge equals update the Android. <laughs> no kidding. And let's let's just build. Let's just see what we got. This is a file new, so it should just build, right? All we did was update uh, Nuka packages. So let's check it out. And how come I'm not seeing? Maybe this, I need to shrink. Oh, there we go. I just need to shrink that down more. Okay, let's check our output. Please, no errors. Please, no errors. See, this is why you need music. Video game music. For compile times. Is building an Android app this slow for you guys? I'm just curious. I mean, I do have an i... I think this is an i7. It shouldn't be, like, terribly slow. I got, like, 16 gigs of RAM. Like, what the heck? Is that just a... You know what? And I, I vaguely remember the Xamarin Forms team saying they sped up the build times. Well, you know what? I disagree. I have it on video. Look how ridiculously long this build is. And all I did was update my Nuka packages. I mean, we updated a lot of packages. Don't get me wrong, but still. Carl runs much faster on my machine. Yeah. But your machine is a beast. You have a YOLO machine. That thing is nuts. I think NASA is sending astronauts to the moon on your machine. <clears throat> oh my god, I'm dying here. I feel like I should bring up a game and play it while they uh while this builds. This is ridiculous. Come on, where's Pierce? Pierce, are you? Did you join this? This is so sad. Where's James? James, are you on here? I have a complaint. I'm, I'm at that point where like, should I just cancel this? Like, you know, where you're like, oh, I'm halfway through, or am I almost there? I don't know. I'm kind of stuck. I mean, I can't do much else until this builds, right? <laughs> Yobo. Yeah, you only build once. So YOLO, you only live once. So Carl has a YOLO machine. Uh, oh, there we go. Yes. What? Uh, Shanran. Shanran M. Is that how you say it? Probably got that wrong. I'm so bad with those screen names. Uh, yeah, Yobo. You only build once. Okay, so we built. We're successful. Finally. So uh, what happens if we go ahead and debug this? Okay, so all I did was create a new project. I waited, I don't know, six or seven years for it to uh, build. 
And now we're going to deploy to my device, which hopefully does not take another three years to do. All right. ILT Fire. Hi, Brian Lagutis. Belated happy birthday. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Big 4 0. That's right. See all the grays right here? I just hit 40. Ugh. It comes quick, man. It comes quick. 40's a. See, some people say that's like midlife, but I don't know. Is it? Is it really midlife? I don't see myself making it to 80. I think I'm past. I think I'm past that. All right, where are we at? Huh, Carl, 60 comes too fast. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Time just flies. It really does. Oh, okay, here we go. I got to pay attention. So here's our page, right? Uh, main page, and we have Welcome to Xamarin Forms and Prism. Great. So let's just open up this XAML file. And let's make some changes. Uh, first, let's just play around with this text. Huh. Hola. Okay, I didn't save. Let's see. Do I have to save? Okay, so nothing updated, so I probably have to save. So let me hit the save button. And let's see what happens. Boom! Hey! Look at that. It worked. All right, so let's add another label. Let's go uh, text equals. Oh, I don't have my Japanese keyboard installed. That sucks. Oh, look, we have a build error. I'm going to save with a build error. I'm going to see what happens. Let me see. Save. What happens? Wow. Nothing happened. So it didn't crash on me. So that is a good thing. Uh, so let's say... Konban. Uh, wow. Save. Bam. Hey, that was actually pretty fast. Okay, that was pretty impressive, actually. Uh... Let's see, nothing. Update the top label with the build error. Let's see. I don't think I, I'm not sure I understand there. What you're asking for there. Are you saying try to create a binding to the build error or what? Okay. So instead of playing around with like labels and texts and like, oh yeah, it updates, woohoo. Uh, I want to jump into the hard stuff. So first of all, I'm debugging. I want to add a custom control, like a chart. Yes, Carl. Time to drop an IG chart and use the configurator. You damn straight, my friend. Because charting is complicated visually to, to generate charts. And so uh, let's, let's do this. Update top label and leave bottom label closing tag. Okay, so. Yeah, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Let's do that. And then like update this up here, blah. Save and see if anything updates. All right, so nothing will update if there's a build error. Nope, it does not still work. As you can see, I changed it to blah. Nothing happened. But if I fix my error and save, then it, it, it works. So no, if there's an error in your XAML, it will not work, even if you save it and all that good stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this save so that should disappear boom all right now what i want to do is i want to add a custom control so first let's let's see if we have this limitation which we probably do but i'm going to cross my fingers can i add nougat packages while i'm running can i do that let's see right click no okay limitation one uh hey where's my stop button ah okay debug stop Okay, so limitation one, if you want to add NuGet packages, uh, you can't, right? You got to stop the project and go again. Oh, you know what? Actually, I got to tell you guys, let me run this again. I got to run this again. Let's we'll hit a five. While that's deploying again, uh, I'm going to bring up another window here because as a lot of you know, I work for a company called Infragistics and we create all these cool controls. And uh, when I was managing the, the Xamarin product, uh, Carl and myself wrote some pretty kick-ass tools. So I'm actually gonna go to the Xamarin uh, product at infragistics.com slash product slash Xamarin. And uh, there's, a, there's a few tools 
that I want to show you guys, which are actually free, but really don't do you a ton of good if you don't use our controls. Uh, what the heck? I must have clicked. Okay, so... Are you done? Okay, now I can hit controls. So if you go to the controls, on the right-hand side here, you can see this productivity pack. Now, I've already talked about app map before, right? You generate your entire uh, Xamarin Forms application. You know, you lay it out, how your navigation works, master detail, tabs, like all that crazy stuff with a click of a button. No, I don't want to chat. No, thank you. I'm chatting with all my friends right now. Don't have time for you. Uh, but use app map to generate your whole your whole application, right? So let's just open this in a quick tab. We're not going to talk about this right now because I already did this. Uh, just want to show you, you know, file new. And then you basically use a Visio type interface to create your entire Xamarin Forms app. And it spits out your views, your view models, navigation code, and all that great stuff automatically. But there's some other tools that we haven't talked about before. One being the toolbox. So yes, this is free. It's completely free. It's on the Visual Studio Marketplace. Uh, so let me open up my Visual Studio again. Uh, so if you go to like extensions, manage extensions, and then you search online for the inferences toolbox, right? That's where you'll find it. Let's bring this back up. You will get, hold on, view, other windows, and for logistics toolbox. Shabam! Okay, so this is completely free for you guys to use. And basically, it has all the controls that Xamarin provides for you out of the box. So, you know, your layouts, your different types of views, your cells, right? So, for example, let's say I want, I don't know. A uh, button. I can just drag my button over. Uh, we'll put some uh, content in here. Uh, hello. Right, and then our button should show up. There it is. Right. Uh, or let's say that, you know, we wanted... Where's my layouts? A grid. Of course, I can click and drag and drop my grid over and my grid's there. Now you're saying, well, Brian, what's, what's so different about this toolbox? That's... Okay, that's cool. Well, we have some functionality that you just don't get out of a standard toolbox. Uh, for one, you can actually search the toolbox. I mean, come on. Visual Studio, how hard is that? I think I think they finally added search to their toolbox in the latest versions. But remember, like for the longest time, that feature was not there. And when you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of controls, they just, they weren't there. Uh, you, you can't search them. You got like scroll, sort alphabetical. It's a pain. Another feature we have is besides the normal like click and drag, if you were to hold the control button down, I think it's control. It's a controller all. I think it's control. And drag, boom! Check that out. We actually provide a more verbose code snippet for you to use to help, you know, just speed up some of the development process. So you don't have to hand code that stuff, right? Uh, so for example, if we go to like, I don't know, uh, list view. Bam! Oh, I didn't drag list view, did I? List view. There we go. Boom. See, we just throw that template in there. Right? Pretty cool. Uh, now, we don't have any data, so obviously nothing's showing up over here. Now, another thing about this toolbox that I want to show you guys is that it's powered by NuGet. So let's go ahead and uh, stop this debug and get back to what I was originally going to do. I want to add charts. So I'm gonna manage my NuGet packages. Zoltrolold, kapow! That's right, man, kapow! Okay, browse. I have a local feed for my uh, infrastructure controls. I'm gonna search for my Xamarin forms. Uh, and let's do, you know what, let's do gauges. Gauges are fun. Let's install a gauge. Yep, go ahead and uh, install anything you need to install so I can use some gauges. Everyone likes gauges. Who doesn't like a gauge? Okay. So I think that's done. I can uh, close that out. Back to my XAML view. Now let's go back to... Hey. 
Did I close my tool? Oh my gosh, I closed my toolbox. Did not mean to do that. Luckily, it's easy to open back up. Because what I want to show you now is look at the very top. Xamarin Forms, Controls, Infragistics. So from that Nougat package I added here, the toolbox said, oh, hey, I know about those. I'll go ahead and give you the controls that you want right out of the box. Okay, cool. So am I running over here? No, I'm not running. So let's let's run. Let's go ahead and F5 this baby because I need to do all this because we're testing hot reload, right? I want to see how this hot reload performs and how it works and if we can break it. See if we can just crash this app. Okay. But yeah, so as you add NuGa packages uh, that belong to Infragistics, like any of our grids or scheduler, financial chart, category chart, like any of that stuff, they will start showing up in the toolbox right there uh, automatically for you, uh, depending on what NuGet packages you add to your project. So pretty cool, right? Damn straight, that's cool. No one else does that. Who? Who does that? No one. Carl and I do that. Man, Carl and I, man, we wrote some kick-ass tooling, man. Like, ridiculous. Oh, is this, is this still building? Oh, come on. It shouldn't take this long. That's it. I'm going to spec a new machine. A desktop, not a laptop, because I'm running off a laptop because I travel quite a bit. I'm going to get a desktop streaming machine dedicated to this stuff. So I need you to give me your suggestions on what kind of powerhouse this should be. Graphics cards, memory, like RAM. What kind of RAM? DDR RAM? I don't know. What kind of, uh, like the NVIDIA graphics? Intel? Should I go Intel? AMD? Is there a, a company that just builds kick-ass boxes? Like, I don't know. I'm going to have to research this stuff and find out. AMD Zen 2 Threadripper. Wait till October. Dude, you got to make me wait till October? Come on. 128 gigabytes of RAM. Are you kidding me? Okay. That might be a little, little excessive for what I'm doing. Oh, hold on. While this builds, let's check out. I'm going to check out this link Carl just posted in there. Let's check it out together, shall we? Digitalstorm.com. We build the world's most advanced PCs. I need, do I need a desktop or do I need a workstation? Hmm. I'll have to check these out. Let's, let's check out desktops. Desktop. Are we here yet? Nope. It's still, still deploying. This is what I'm talking about. Why does it take so long? I don't know. That's okay. These are pretty cool looking actually. Is this liquid cooled? That's too fancy, man. Up to four dedicated GPU. Man. That's what I'm talking about. Mid Tower, Lumos, Velox. Ultimate performance we see with. Blow the doors off. I don't know the difference between these. Let's check out this one while I'm still waiting for this. Nope, not yet. It's okay. We can check out cool boxes. A Ventum X, that's what I need to look at. The Ventum. Look, my whole machine is just bogged down because of Visual Studio. Come on. I am going to give Pierce my two cents about the improved Xamarin Form build times. I can't even get this website to load. Oh, there we go. The ultimate PC. Dang, check that out. Does it come with two graphics card? Up to 32 cores. Okay, how much is this going to cost? Because I ain't no, I don't I got that kind of money. It said starting at, but I'm not seeing any uh, any pricing. 
See, before I look at specs, I look at price. Can I even afford this thing? Okay, famous people. Like, I don't need to see them. They got money to afford. Oh, here we go. Oh, this isn't bad. 1500 bucks. Oh, there's that thread dripper. There's the thread dripper right there. AMD thread dripper series. Oh, we're back. Okay. Okay, we got to come back to this. All right. So our app is running. So now theoretically I can start like creating controls and like doing some crazy stuff, right? So I'm gonna open up my toolbox and I want you to notice something. Uh, I'm going to pick the radio gauge. I'm gonna drag this over and look what happened. You see that? My namespace was added for me automatically, just like you would expect to happen when you bring a custom control over to your XAML file. Uh, so let's save that and see what happens. Will it render? Will it render? Will it render? Yes! Oh my god, it worked! I'm so excited. It's the first time I did that. I was like, oh my god, it's not going to work. And the is going to look so bad. <laughs> well, actually, I would have blamed it on the hot reload. I, it wouldn't have been us. It would it would have been uh, it would have been a hot reload not being able to handle the power of uh, professional charts. Okay, so now you could technically come in here, right, and start like messing with colors and. Uh, background colors and all that junk, right? Uh, but I'm lazy. I really don't like to write my XAML anymore. So what I'm going to do is, you see this little light bulb? When I select this light bulb, another tool that we have, hold on, let me bring up the website so you can see this. Uh, this one. Right, bam, right there. It are what's called control configurators. Now, actually, I'm not going to ruin the surprise. I'm just going to blow your mind right now by clicking on this quick action and saying configure ZAM radio gauge. So I'm going to click that button and I'm going to wait for the magic to happen. Bam! What is this I'm looking at? Well, my friends, this is what's called a control configurator. Early on, well, actually still <laughs> early on, uh, but still... As of today, you know, Xamarin Forums has zero design experience. Now with Hot Reload, they kind of have something, right? You can like modify your XAML by hand and see the, the code kind of reflect uh, in your Hot Reload should just show up, right? Uh, but that still kind of still kind of sucks, right? Uh, wait, I got, got a question. Uh, Shanran, WPF? It, what, is this Dialog WPF? Yes, the dialogue is WPF. This was written in WPF. Essentially, what this allows me to do is visually configure this control. So for example, oh, I want this to have this scale. And I want to change my needle to that needle. Uh, and I want to enable dragging. Transparency? No, nah, I don't care about that. Uh, I don't know. Let's number, oh, number of ranges. How many ranges? Let's five ranges okay what shape do you want them ah uh, how about this okay that works uh brushes do you care about brushes how about that color theme that works you get the idea yes carl carl i will get there my friend i know you're excited excited as i am uh but let, let's let's just kind of ease them into the amazing thing that is a control configurator okay then on the right hand side, you see a property grid, right? And you can control all these different things. But well, what do they do? Crap, I don't know what they do. Uh, I mean, this is an extensive list of properties, right? Like what the heck do these things do? Well, what I can do is start playing with them to see what they do. Like I'll select this range uh, and I'll just start playing with some values. Oh, okay. That does that. What's this do? Okay, that kind of does that. What's this? That's kind of weird, but I'll take it. Uh, eh, sure, why not? Uh, but as you can see, I can start modifying and playing with these values for the tr for this uh, for this control. Oh, I can even like interact with it. See that? I I enabled uh, needle dragging. Boop 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 boop. All right, boom. I did that. Can I disable that? Yep. See, it doesn't work anymore. Enable. It works. But I can visually configure this. Now watch watch this. Watch this. Apply close. Bam, baby. 
all that code was just written for you automatically. All of it. So now I'm going to save and let's see what happens with hot reload. Will it work? Will it crash? Will it? Oh my God, it worked. Yes. Okay, so hot reload is pretty cool. It's, it, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, that's not all we can do with these control configurators. Let me uh, launch this again and notice that it retains the information in the XAML. It loads it. So if I, you know, if I just close this out and let's say we set, I don't know, uh, is there a background color? Yeah, background color. To, no, not white. We need something ugly like red. Save. Boom! That's awesome. Okay. Let's go. Oh, someone's out my door. Of course someone's out my door. Of course. Let's go ahead and launch this. And there you go. In the configurator, you now see the red background that we hand typed in the XAML. So it brought the value. It's two-way, baby. It's two-way. Okay, but this, this sucks. We, we don't want to do this. This is ugly. Obviously, you do not want this in your uh, in your app at all. Uh, so let's do a quick set. Do you see this where it says quick set? I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to pick a much more beautiful uh, style. Uh, like any of these are better than what I have. So let's pick this one. And it automatically set that design, created all the ranges and everything required to make that gauge look like that this quick set here, right? So now I'm going to apply and close, save, and let's see hot reload. Boom! Oh, that was fast too. Okay, okay. What? Okay. Now, now I want to data bind data. I want to data bind some data. Uh, that means I need to go into my view model. Main page view model. And I want to add a property. Oh! Oh, I can't. I can't hot reload. That's, yep. Limitation number two. We hit it. I have to stop to make changes to C sharp uh, in my, in my uh, view model class here. So actually, I'm going to add a new prop. Uh, let's make this an int. Sure. I'll just call it value, value. And I'm gonna set it to some arbitrary number. I don't care what it is. We'll just say seven, whatever. Uh, now that we have that, I want to data bind my radio gauge to that value. Now I could, I could just, I could just do it here, right? I could just do it in XAML. That's, I don't wanna do it in XAML. What fun would that be? So let's run this again. I made my change. Uh, can I close that? Yep. So I, I made my change in my C-sharp file. Now I'm going to uh, launch this app again. And I guess we're going to have to wait quite a while. So let's go back looking at uh, my next machine. That's my next machine over here, right there. Let's see. Uh, now I remember, I think it was uh, IoT Fire. I think he mentioned somewhere 2.5K max. We'll see. So these... Uh, these are automatically above that, so you can't get that. I will start with this one. Up to eight cores, 64 gigabyte DDR, up to two dedicated GPUs. Uh, oh, you said minimum? Minimum? Jeez, dude, you banking, bro. That's like my maximum. Are you kidding me? 2,500 bucks on a machine. That's crazy. That's like a... This is an Apple, right? I'm not buying Apple products. I have a budget. So I'm going to try to stay under... 2500 because look at this look at these specs man eight processor cores 64 gigabyte ddr4 two dedicated gpus well that's up to let's let's check this out let's check that out oh wait we'll have to come back to that because we're up and running already let's just minimize i'm gonna still click on that okay all right so now let's go ahead and i'm gonna use the the quick action, the control dot to launch that, right? So now I'm launching this control configurator again. And in this property grid, I'm gonna go to the value property. Can you see this little little square right there? You see that square? I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna say create data binding. Oh yeah. 
Now, using a naming convention of page name plus view model, it's going to find the view model for me automatically. Okay, so it says binding context main page view model. Now, if it got it wrong, which it probably won't get it wrong, but if it gets it wrong, you can simply change the binding context by going back and finding your view models wherever they may exist, right? Pretty cool. This will list all your view models and you can dig through here and find whatever you're looking for, uh, but it got it right in our case. So this view model has two properties. It has a value property and a string of title. You know what? I am binding to a value property, so I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna have the default mode, no converter, no string format. Uh, create binding, please. Shazam! There we go. And now you'll see this has a yellow border around it indicating there is a binding. So I'm going to apply and close. Okay, now let's watch the hot reload. I'm going to save. Did it work? Yes, it worked. Good job, hot reload. Good job. I'm super proud of you. You know what? I have another question. Can I like, we need a multi-page app though. We need a multi-page app. Uh, okay. Let's do this. I want to know if I can like switch pages in the app and edit them. And if it will like know what page I'm working on. So I'm going to go ahead and add new item. It's going to be an infragistics app map because I am in a hurry. And we're going to get our nice little dialogue here, which is a little too big for this small screen size I have to set to. Let's create a master detail page. And I'll say my master. Whoop, I can't spell. My master. And yeah, we'll leave those the same. Doesn't matter. Uh, Jerry app map. So now what's going to happen is... The app map is going to create all those views and those view models and all the navigation code for me automatically. All I'll have to do is go into my uh, app code here, minimize, and change all this mess to just uh, my master. Okay, my master. Got it. Okay, so we're done with that page. So let's go ahead and start running this again which means let's go check out machines let's go find my next machine okay so we have good better best and ultimate okay if i'm staying under the my minimum 2500 because i don't roll like iot fire does all right i'm not banking like that uh i can try to stay in this spot here which it looks like it gives me an Intel Core i9. Dang, okay, i9. All right, I see, I see. A 32 gigabytes, impressive. 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe drive. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've never heard of this. I have no idea what this is, but it has an S SD icon next to it. So I'm going to assume it's amazing, okay. And then two terabytes of 7,200 RPM storage. Okay, this is really good because I do a lot of videos, as you know, uh, for my YouTube channel. And those take up quite a bit of space. So I would love to have two terabytes to store that on. Check this out. A liquid CPU cooler. Pfft. Sold. Uh, Carl says that's a way fast drive. I hope so. And a Z390 motherboard. Once again, this is not my language. I don't know what language you're speaking, but I'm going to assume it's awesome. So what can I, it says customize. What can I customize? Dude, I might just get this. What, what about the graphics card? What graphics card comes in this? It didn't tell me. Okay, let's check. Nope, still building over there. We'll come back to that. Nope, special offers. No thanks. Carl says it's Nvidia. Let's find out, shall we? He's probably right. He's a freaking expert in this stuff. Special offers up to 500 bucks off. Ooh. 
Now you're talking. Okay, why did... Like, I don't care about that. Show me what I'm getting. Trim, standard... Okay, I don't want to change my trim. Processor, okay. Looks good. Motherboard, Asus Prime. Okay, I don't know what that is, but I'm assuming it's amazing. That's a lot of RAM. I ain't gonna lie. You don't deserve that PC if you're going to use Edge. Ooh! Sting! Ouch! That stings, man. You might be right. I don't know. But, hey, I use lots of browsers, actually. I use Chrome, too. Uh, power supply, 850-watt power supply. Dang! Is this going out? You know, I need this 32 gigs of RAM because I can't even build this stupid project. Oh! Look at this. We have a hot reload failed to initialize. We broke it. We broke it. Look at that. I don't know what we did, but we broke it. Check logs. Can I click on this? Will it give me the logs? Okay, how are you going to tell me to check output logs and not give me the link to the output logs? Come on, man. What is this? Okay, so let's... Let's just start by doing a simple build. And then we'll try again. Build. I don't know where the logs are at. Let me just get a successful build. And then we'll try it. We'll do it separately, right? We'll, we'll build it and then we'll we'll run. Uh, it should build just fine though. We didn't... What's going on? Do I have to close this? Rebuild. Okay, let's do a rebuild and try it again. Let's go back. I got excited looking at this, uh, this box here. All right, storage. Expansion bay. What? You need an expansion bay, right? I would think so. Like, what if I want to put a capture card in there? Don't I need that? Oh, that's if you want to buy one of theirs. No, I, I want my own capture card. Just give me space for it. I hope it gives me space. Okay, there's this. There's the hard drive. Hard drive. Okay, don't need another one. Don't care about raid. Internet. Okay, multi here we go. 1650. For what kind of... I don't know if that's good or not. Aren't there like the 20-something out now? 2060, that sounds good. Look, I'm still under budget, so I can come in here. Uh-oh, Carl said he lost me. Am I back? Let me know if I'm back. That's probably Visual Studio. Disconnected me because of a build. 2080. Super 8 gigabyte. Ship, ships it into July. Uh, maybe I'll look at this. Let's assume I'm going to get this awesome one here. Because honestly, I mean, if we're looking at these options. Ooh, that's over budget though. Ooh, I might have to come back on that one. Uh, Yeah. Oh, two. That's why two times. I don't want two of those. But that one of these, or it's $1,000? Look, I ain't that serious. Maybe I need to come down to this one. The 2070. Oh, not 2080. Not 2080. I'll, I'll... I'll get the 2080. I'll just put in a few hundred more and call it good. I think that will be fine for what I'm using it for. Okay. Is my build done? No, of course my build's not done. Why would it be? Okay. Oh, come on. Now my... Here we go. Cancel. Who's at my door? Okay, so I have the ring. Let me check. Who's at my door? What is this? Ugh. Okay. Hold on one sec. That is groceries. One sec. What's the point of having kids if they won't get the door? Ugh. Okay. We, we built. 
Now let's see if Hot Reload will work. Cross my fingers. F5, let's build, let's, let's deploy. So we broke it once. And the feedback is, if you're gonna tell me to check the log files, give me a link to the log files. That way I can even send them to you uh, when I report my error and you know what's going on. So deploying to Google Nexus 7, okay. While we wait for that, let's go back to the the Yobo. The Yobo. So sound card. Yeah, I don't care about sound card. I'm Extreme cooling. So it comes with a liquid CPU cooler. Single fan. Is that bad? Do I need more than one fan? Fully sealed no maintenance. Okay, I like no maintenance. Are these loud? Carl, you have one of these boxes. Are these loud boxes? Because I can't have like a big hum you know, picking up in my mic when I record and do these streams. I mean, what kind of cooling options are there? Stage one. Ooh, I can save money. Stage two for $40. So Carl says he can't hear his. You know what? We I probably want to up, upgrade to a stage two. Okay, not that crazy. Not that crazy. But maybe an extra 100 bucks is okay. Maybe, yeah, I want it cool, man. I don't want to have problems overheating. Dang, 20. Okay, I got to stay under. I got to get another job, guys. Got to get another job. Cable management, sure. Airflow. No, I don't need lighting. I'm not like that. Like, I don't, I don't look at lighting. Chassis fans. I don't need a chassis fan because I have that awesome cooling thing, right? Noise reduction. Shouldn't I just... Oh, I don't even have an option for noise reduction. It just says I'm going to be loud. Overclocking. Okay. I just want to be able to buy something, open it, plug it in, and it just work, right? Okay, let's check our... Uh... Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Yes. We're back. Oh! Time exceeded getting exception details. Okay, so something is obviously not happy with live reload right now. Let's go back in here. I didn't misspell anything. My master. Right there. So does Live Reload not like master detail pages? Let's go back to main page and see what happens. So, so far feedback is Live Reload doesn't like master pages? If this works, then there's definitely an issue with live reload and master pages. No, you do not need a navigation page uh, in this scenario because I'm not navigating anywhere. However, if this was a real app, I probably would uh, prefix this with a navigation page. So I think we might have found a bug in hot reload. It does not like master detail pages. Okay, so this... This looks like it ran. Uh, actually, I think we were... Nope, it hasn't run yet. It's still still thinking. Okay, so that worked. That worked. Let me stop this. My master did not work. Let's look at my master. Why didn't... Why did it not like... Master detail pages. Oh, because I'm a moron. Come on, guys. I didn't give the master detail page a detail page. Where, where were you guys? I needed you. Gotta have a detail. So we'll set the main page as the detail. So maybe I think that was it. False alarm. I'm sorry. Hot reload. You probably can handle master detail pages. I'm sorry. My fault. I don't have to use a child page. So Carl's asking, shouldn't you use one of the child pages? No, I don't have to use a, ch a child page. I just won't have a way to get back to uh, the main page because I don't have a menu item for it. But there, there it is. The, oh my God. I didn't put a navigation page in there. Ugh, I have to swipe. Nope, wrong. 
swipe from the side. Swipe. Nope. In order to get my master to show, I have to swipe from the edge here. There we go. Oh, I had it. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go to the first child. I think. I might have to touch the actual device because this is not work. oh there we go okay so empty child okay so here's what i want to test let's come in here uh delete this come to my toolbox and drag i don't know a linear gauge why okay i knew it i knew it look at that visual studio not responding every single stream i do visual studio not responding let's uh let's cross my fingers and say i don't have to go through this mess again come on work i'm not touching anything not touching anything look at there it couldn't handle it and it opened up over here. It crashed. So, that could be a couple things. That could be hot reload, being in preview and just crashing. Uh, or it could be my crappy ass machine not being able to power one instance of Visual Studio while streaming. Uh, because it, Visual Studio is on this other screen over here. And I can't even touch it. It's, wait, I think I can touch it now. Yes, I can. Ah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, my CPU percentage is only at like 9% right now. 9.9, 10%. I have a little uh, gauge it's telling me over here. But even resizing this, like, I don't know how well this is coming across on the stream, but even when I resize this, it's so like slow to respond to that. Like really slow, jittery. Really weird. Okay. So let's, okay, now I'm... here we go. And of course my phone's gonna ring. Oh, that was my boss. Oh, I should call my boss back and have a conversation during the stream on the boss. That would be fun. All right, I'm gonna pl I'm gonna try to run this again. What I want to test is if I can switch between pages in the app on the master detail page and change the XAML in my uh, in Visual Studio. If Hot Reload will get that right. However, it looks like. I'm having problems with that. And I don't know if this is a hot reload issue or if this is just a Visual Studio issue. Very interesting. I don't know. If I could be confident in my system, I could say, yeah, for sure, that is hot reload. But I am not confident in my system. Hold on. I have to text my boss back. I have to let him know, sorry, man, I'm in a stream. <clears throat> Here we go, I'm texting him right now. In a live stream, call you back. Okay. And wait for the app to load. So I got a question. What do you think about Terry Davis? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know Terry Davis. Could you explain? Uh, maybe a link to a profile that I could check out? Uh, you know what? Let me grab this, this device. Maybe if I don't use my mouse and instead I use my finger, it will not crash on me. Using a... a a mouse might be too intense for uh, for Visual Studio, right? Or for my computer. Okay, so we're on the first child. 
Let's start simple. Because it crashed last time. So, empty child. Uh, we'll go testing. Save. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So let's switch to the other one. Let's open up this one. Testing two, save. Okay, that worked. That worked, right? Let's go to this next one. Testing three, save. Not bad. Okay, so it looks like I'm able to actually jump between pages in the running app, modify them, and they, they still work. So, let's see. Let's add a custom control now. Boom. Save. Wow, that was fast. That was actually stupid fast. Let me go to this other one. Let's add another... Save. Works. And yeah, using my finger on the device is much better. I'm, it's not lagging anymore. Oh, wait. Let's get rid of that. And we'll throw that in here. Save. Sweet. Okay. Control configurator. Ding, 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 ding. I've never heard this song before, but I already know it. How weird is that? Uh, let's pick this quick set. Save and close. Save. Oh, okay. So it works. Awesome. Oh, yes, Carl. I can double click. So, yeah, besides clicking and dragging, you can come in here and just double click. Uh-oh. Are you sure, Carl? Double click. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Save. There it is. Cool. Uh, oh, Terry Davis is the smartest programmer that has ever lived. Or at least that's what he said. Sweet. I would love to meet the guy. He sounds smart. I'm sure he's a very talented programmer. I'm sure he can teach me lots of cool stuff that I would be interested in. I'll have to look him up. Oh, he died. Oh, ha ha ha. Yeah, you got me. Okay, well, that's it. So, uh, yeah, I, I uh, only had one issue with Hot Reload. We had this weird issue where we did a build. After adding a whole bunch of files, we did a build, and a, a debug, and it, it just wouldn't work. And it said, check log files, and it didn't give me a link to log files, and I don't know where they are. So I will be providing that feedback to the Xamarin team. Uh, so hopefully they can fix that in the extension. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. That's Hot Reload. That's my first experience with it. Like I said, if I still had this link up, please. Where is it at? Right. Nope, nope, nope. It's right. Samuel Hot Reload. It's right here. Go sign up for this. And uh, yeah, you can play with it yourself as well. But keep in mind, this is a running Prism app with dependency injection and all that crazy stuff in it. And the hot reload is working just fine. It has some limitations, right? We can't add NuGet packages. We can't edit code files like view models and stuff. Uh, but I, you know what? We try to view model. Shouldn't be different, but I'm just curious. Let's just try code behind. No, can't do that either. Okay, so no C-sharp files. Uh, so yeah, sorry for the late notice on this. Normally I, you know, I stream every Tuesday, but I had issues. As you can see, I'm still kind of having some issues. Uh, that does it for today's stream. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle, uh, but you know, learn some cool stuff with Hot Reload. And I'm, I'm really excited about this. This is pretty cool, especially when you combine this with these productivity tools from Infragistics, you have the app map, the toolbox, which you can, the toolbox is free, guys. Just go download it yourself. It's right now. Uh, it's fine. Go ahead. And then, you know, app map is free. You can use the app map. Download it. It's completely free. Use it to your heart's content. 
Uh, and then the control configurators. They're free too, but they don't really work unless you have our control. So in a sense, eh. But the extension themselves is, is free. Okay, uh, highly recommend you watch some of Terry Davis's videos off stream. Will do. Thanks for the tip. I will do that this weekend because the wife is going out of town and I will have nothing else to do but to work and watch videos and learn new stuff. Uh, thanks. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for joining me on such short notice. I hope to see you again next week, uh, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, on my normal streaming schedule. Thanks again, and uh, I'll see you next time.